So, uh, got another scrapyard find here. Um, it's a opposed to uh, Briggs and Stratton. It's not a complete engine, as you can see. There's no flywheel or ignition, no uh, carburetor or intake manifold. I do have the exhaust pipes for it, but uh, it's also uh, seized up. But uh, the price was right, so I uh, hoisted its, I don't know, 60 pound weight or whatever out of the scrapyard. So now I'm going to uh, begin uh, disassembly of it. This is the, the largest uh, Briggs & Stratton engine uh, I've ever got. I've got single cylinder like 12 or 13 horse mower engines, but uh, nothing, uh, nothing quite this uh, large before. Kind of interested what it looks like inside there. So I got the first cylinder head off here. Looks like some uh, oil and uh, ice, water. I'll look at the head here. See, there's uh, still got ice up there uh, to the left of the spark plug. So we'll get all that uh, melted out. See, it's dripping there. So not much oil. Some. Well, looks like uh, it isn't too too bad a shape though. I guess this these engines have a uh, cast iron uh, cylinder bore. So. I'll figure out the bore and stroke on it if and when I can get it to turn over here and I'll try to figure out a model number and a size, all that type of thing. So I got the second cylinder head removed there. This one, uh, well, looking at the head, I see a couple drops of water in there, but uh, nothing too major. It's fairly dry compared to the, the other one, but uh, there is uh, rust, flakes of rust here. So this one uh, might, might in fact be seized up, but penetrating oil seems to work wonders on uh, engines, hopefully. That uh, subterranean 65 or whatever it was there a year or so ago, it I had to press the piston out of it, but hopefully this one will be more cooperative. I noticed uh, the inlet port on this side, it's got some major crud in there. So it looks, uh, it's got like moss growing on it here. I'm thinking this engine was like abandoned outside in a scrap pile for a while or something. Well, continuing on here, I got the, the tappet covers off there. crankcase vents, all that. This exhaust port's full of ice. That intake there is not much better. It's got a bunch of crud in it. There's a fair amount of uh, like grass clippings and things in the cooling fins. So the engine's seen some use. An old engine like this, you, you gotta wonder what the story behind it is. It's, it's almost too bad they couldn't talk. Sometimes, you know, you, you might hear the story like, uh, that was a good engine. My I was made right to specs, everything was good, but I was abused by my owner. They, they never checked the oil or changed it, and finally one hot summer day I seized up and they abandoned me in the field. Just makes you wonder, you know, if that's the kind of story that happened to an engine like this. Anyway, maybe I'm still just suffering from polar vortex fever or something there, so ignore that part if you have to. But yeah, it's definitely got you know water in uh, various parts of it here. Sitting outside with uh, no uh, no intake manifold on it, so water got in. But I'm gonna try to unseize it. Keep plugging away on it here. Oh, miraculously, I got it to turn over here with the help of a 14-inch pipe wrench. Yeah, it goes right down there. It'll keep going, but the exhaust valve in this cylinder opens, but the intake, as soon as it tried to open, uh, it wouldn't turn anymore, so that means that the intake valve is stuck. So I'll be uh, applying some uh, penetrating oil to that. That's good that it's not uh, you know, totally seized solid like uh, some old engines I found that are seriously corroded, so maybe I got to this one just in time. So, possibility I'll 
try to get this going. I say I don't have a flywheel for it or anything, but uh, I uh, I do have uh, one of the uh, uh, dual spark plug wire uh, coils for it, magneto. So, so it's a possibility. So here I've removed the bottom cover. It's got like uh, six bolts in it and uh, a couple of uh, dowels. So I uh, put penetrating oil on them. And then there was just a bunch of smacking on the four mount uh, legs that it bolts, uh, mount feet I guess you'd call them, that it bolts to the mower deck with. Uh, the there's a little piece off the governor here that uh, fell off into the crankcase. I can see it down there. Interesting thing here, the oil dipper. It's a two-stage thing. you got a second dipper down there at the bottom that uh, turns along with this one. Get a little more light on it there. You see it at the bottom there. It turns the opposite direction. Well, that's kind of interesting. haven't seen one of them before. So undo this bolt here and you can replace it if there's any problem. But uh, really deep sump in it there. It's oh, at least three inches deep. But anyway, so I got uh, got that uh, crankcase thing over there. A little bit of water in there. Some leaked out when I broke the seal on the gasket too. But uh, everything seems relatively okay. So I'll keep tearing her down here. I see my uh, timing mark up there. So uh, need to spin it around. That's probably the point where you can install the camshaft and remove it. So get that lined up if I can. <laughs> 